the month. This is the cheat sheet for Wednesday, March 28th. We've heard all the sound bites from yesterday coming out of the Supreme Court uh, hearing on health care reform. You know, the actual reform name of it, Affordable, uh, the Affordable uh, Health Care Act. Well, if you or I, as a private individual, had a business and we said it was the affordable health care business, and we ended up charging people the increasing rates that we're going to end up paying if this remains law, we'd all be sued into oblivion and put out of business. What am I mean? Well, not only do I know this to be unconstitutional as a reasonably intelligent and literate individual on the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, which I do have confidence, like your heart not, not be troubled, as my friend Hannity would say, right, uh, regarding the United States Supreme Court and its ultimate ruling on health care reform, but here's the bigger problem. The latest health care numbers are out. And you know how we've already seen a huge increase in uh, expense related to the early phasing in of health care reform, but that most of it doesn't go into play until 2014. That means that the increase in expense related to health care and health insurance is only expected to escalate further. Before this passed, the average family health care policy employer sponsor in the United States ended up costing $12,680. By the end of last year, it was over $15,000. But I went ahead and projected, using CBO estimates, what the average family policy would be in the United States just by the end of this one decade. You ready for this? More than $25,000. In fact, my number actually got me close to $28,000. You want to say false advertising? I say let's sue everybody who ended up voting for this thing and called it the Affordable Healthcare Act because affordable, we're going to have our policies more than double, more than double in cost over the course of one decade with this thing being in play. And this gets back to the original port, uh, point surrounding this. We, constitutionally or otherwise, did not have a crisis of insurance coverage in this country, which is the only thing this dealt with. We have a crisis of cost in healthcare. And the problem is, Many families and individuals now, even that have full-time jobs, can't even afford to, to pay their portion of their employer-sponsored plan, let alone what's going to happen when it more than doubles inside of the next seven years. I mean, what we're setting up for is cataclysmic. So not only is it unconstitutional, but it also is false advertising. One more reason we need it repealed and then to deal with the real issue, which is cost. Speaking of which, here's one for you. It's not such a good story either. Business. We are officially going to have the highest corporate tax rate in the world this weekend. Japan's cutting uh, their uh, tax rate on businesses. By the time you factor in the federal tax on business and the average state income tax on business, our tax rate is 39.8% of the United States of America. That will be the highest in the world. Now, by the time you average in write-offs from businesses, it does take it to just a tick under 30%, which puts us in about the average of developed countries. But here's the problem. If you're a business, and many small businesses fall in this category, that can't get a bunch of write-offs, you're paying, as a small business person, the highest tax rate in the world, the most expensive country to do business in the world. And is that what made this country great? All the more reason why we need and a complete overhaul, not only in our personal income tax, but our business income tax. Take a look at Mitt Romney's plan. Um, also, the housing index. Case Schiller, you are familiar with the Schiller. Robert Schiller was out with a report yesterday. A couple things. One, I don't want you to get hung up on. It showed that overall national home prices dropped by eh, about 4% year over year. But in our area, on the east coast of Florida, actually up 8% year over year. Remember, what happens nationally isn't necessarily what happens here because we ended up having our housing market go in the tank about a year and a half before the rest of the country, and we're coming out sooner, and we're a destination place. But there's one other message that's important that he said, that he doesn't anticipate that home prices will ever get back to the levels we saw in the boom during our lifetimes. That's a good reminder to you. We should never again view our homes, even when we get to a healthy housing market again, as a cash register as something that's going to fund our retirement or buy us uh, boats and second homes with our home. It is a home. It's a roof over our heads. We should appreciate it that way. That is the cheat sheet for today. Enjoy yours. See you tomorrow.